Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Now come on in. Now come. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram. And let's get into the video. Da, 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 da. What's going on, everybody? Listen. Da, 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 da. All the moves with them shows in here. Listen, what's going on, everybody? Happy Friday. Oh, my God. Hold up. We got to make sure we on the right one. Hold up, Jesus. We got to make sure we on the right one. What's up? What's going on? How y'all doing out there? Listen, I don't know about you, but my allergies are killing me. Okay, it's some bullshit out here. Do y'all know the reason why? I talked about this before. Shout out to Peace to Mateo for becoming a member. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I love them white men screaming for me. Um, thank you, Kiribu. Hold up, we're gonna go get the girls. Hold up, let's go get the girls. Hold up. A, it's a combination of people. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for becoming, oh, being a member for five months. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bridget Williams. Listen. <laughs> we appreciate y'all around here for that. We really do. There will be a members only live. So it's it's a good time for y'all to sign up. Now, listen, the, the members only live is not going to be today. It's going to be tomorrow. Okay. But in the members only live so far, the topics are D.L. Hughley, Bishop Whitehead, Gilbert Arenas, and Mike Epps. Okay, now that's for the members only live. This live, we have a number of things to get through. And I think I'm going to be adding things to that list. Y'all know there's always shit going on during the weekend, you know, that I might want to catch y'all up on. Okay. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I'm thinking about doing that Saturday, but you know that might end up being a part of the Love and Marriage DC recap. Okay, because y'all know if you're a member, thank you for becoming a member. Listen. Thank you, Ariana Sims, for being a member for a month. Thank you. Okay. Um yeah, we covering the F boys on the members only. Listen, um, we gonna see because you know lyric lyric ended up being off again. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm definitely probably gonna be a little busy, but ultimately, I'll be here, girl. Okay, I'll be there whenever you call me. I'll be there. Okay, Tanisha, did I thank you too? Thank you, love, for being a member for a month. Thank y'all for being members for a month. I appreciate y'all. Okay. Okay, we about to talk about it, girl. We about to get into it. But let's let's start here. Okay, because I was keeping y'all abreast on what was going on with uh, DA Fannie Willis in this whole case against Trump. Now, I feel like it's, it's foolishness, really, um, that they're even zeroing in on Fannie's relationship with Nathan Wade. Um, specifically because from what I understand, opposing counsel also has, you know, a couple or two. Um, so, it, you know, it's just kind of like that has nothing, no bearing on this case. But Trump and his lawyers and everyone involved is going to make sure they pull every rabbit out of their hat that they can in order to keep him from being held accountable for trying to steal the election. So shout out to Nick at night. OK, a judge in Georgia has ruled that the district attorney, Fannie Willis, can continue to head the prosecution of Donald Trump for trying to undermine the 2020 presidential election in the state of Georgia as long as a top deputy steps down. The ruling came after hearings that offered a dramatic deviation from the racketeering case against Trump and 14 remaining co-defendants as it investigated Willis' romantic relationship with Nathan Wade, a special prosecutor in the case, and her top deputy. So basically they're saying that she can stay, but he's got to go. And he's not as dire to the case as she is. So he probably will. And it's fine. Okay. The court therefore concludes that the prosecution of this case cannot proceed until the state selects one of two options. The district attorney may choose to step aside along with the whole of her office 
and refer the prosecution to the prosecuting attorney's counsel for reassignment? <laughs> Judge Scott McAfee, the judge overseeing the case, wrote on Friday, he added that alternatively, Wade could withdraw, allowing the district attorney, the defendants, and the public to move forward without his presence or remo child remo <laughs> remuneration. Uh, it was just hard for me to get it out. Distracting from the potentially compromising and potentially compromising the merits of this case, which I don't understand how. I don't understand what would happen um, where sex between or relations between, you know what I'm saying? As long as it's not affecting the case, they're still able to do what they need to do on the case. Like, I guess what? Their emotions, they wouldn't be able to check their emotions when they get to work. Like what? <laughs> like they're on the same side. This is about both of their careers. But I'm glad that she's going to remain on the case um because i feel like at this point it would be detrimental to the case in order for her to step down her whole office that whole thing it just seems easier oh boy wade go on ahead and find something else to do okay um so that's the update on that okay um we're going to we're going to go ahead and read a few of y'all comments right here come on fanny the gqp talking about bringing her to the house of rep i don't think it's a good idea for them i don't see why not I really hate that this personal situation is making her look like, you know, she's not worthy of the work that she's put in. You know what I'm saying? Um, she she does have to tighten up. She she does absolutely have to tighten up. I agree with that. OK, um, so, yeah. Move on. Let's move on. Let's get to this TikTok ban. Right. Because <laughs> girl, what? Y'all really let this get to this point, trying to bully these people out their business. <laughs> Okay, so the TikTok ban. I'm going to actually pull up an article about it. I just wanted to save it here so I would have a picture of it. But I've talked about this before. And basically, the U.S. House has passed a TikTok ban bill. And the reason why they want to ban TikTok is... Hold up, y'all. I'm sorry. Shit's popping up all over the screen. It's because they want TikTok to separate themselves from their Chinese owner because they feel like it helps the Chinese get more information on Americans. And I'm just kind of like, as opposed to all the other ways that they can get information off of us, come on, bro. To me, this is cap. To me, this is cap. I don't think they give a damn about our national or, you know, our security or whatever the fuck. I, our data. I don't think they care about that. I don't. They sell it to people all the time. They sell our data um, all the time through all of these apps we sign up for, through the internet, everything. Like, come on. This is bullshit, in my opinion. But let me read, okay, because I, I want to I wanna be very on par with what's going down. This is the New York Times, okay? The House on Wednesday passed a bill with broad bipartisan support that would force TikTok's Chinese owner to either sell the hugely popular video app or have it banned in the United States. The move escalates a showdown between Beijing and Washington over the control of a wide range of technologies that could affect national security, free speech, and the social media industry. Republican leaders fast-tracked the bill through the House with limited debate and it passed on a lopsided vote of 352 to 65, reflecting widespread backing for legislation that would take direct aim at China in an election year. The action came despite TikTok's efforts to mobilize its 170 million U.S. users against the measure. And amid the Biden administration's push to persuade lawmakers that Chinese ownership of the platform poses grave national security risks to the United States, including the ability to meddle in elections as opposed to the president that meddled in the last election that y'all won't even hold responsible enough to keep him from running again. Bullshit. The result was a bipartisan coalition behind the measure that included Republicans who defied former president Donald Trump in supporting it. The Democrats who also fell in line behind a bill that president Biden has said he would sign. The bill faces a difficult road to passage in the Senate, where Senator Chuck Schumer, 
Democrat of New York, and the majority leader has been noncommittal about bringing it to the floor for a vote and where some lawmakers have vowed to fight it. And even if it passes the Senate and becomes law, it is likely to face legal challenges. That's good to know. But Wednesday's vote was the first time a measure that could widely ban TikTok for consumers was approved by a full chamber of Congress. The app has been under threat since 2020, with lawmakers increasingly arguing that Beijing's relationship with TikTok parent company ByteDance raises national security risks. The bill is aimed at getting ByteDance to sell TikTok to non-Chinese owners within six months. Y'all, that, that just seems extremely audacious to me. The president would sign off on the sale if it resolved national security concerns. If that sale did not happen, the app would be banned. Representative Mike Gallagher, the Wisconsin Republican who is among the lawmakers leading the bill, said on the floor before the vote that it forces TikTok to break up with the Chinese Communist Party. Are y'all still doing this? Y'all are really still using communism as a red herring? This is a common sense measure to protect our national security, he said. I don't believe anything in his head. Like, look at his head. I, I, I don't believe anything he's saying. Alex Horick, a spokesman for TikTok, said in a statement that the House process was secret and the bill was jammed through for one reason. It's a ban. We are hopeful that the Senate will consider the facts, listen to their constituents and realize the impact on the economy. 7 million small businesses and the 170 million Americans who use our service. On Wednesday before the House vote, Beijing condemned the push by U.S. lawmakers and rejected the notion that TikTok was a danger to the United States. At a daily press briefing, Wang Wenbin, a spokesperson for China's foreign ministry, accused Washington of resorting to hegemonic moves when one could not succeed in fair competition. Mm. Calling you bitches so losers. If the bill were to become law, it would likely deepen a cold war between the United States and China over the control of many technologies, including solar panels, electric vehicles, and semiconductors. Mr. Biden has announced limitations on how U.S. financial firms can invest in Chinese companies and restricted the sale of American sensitive data like location and health information to data brokers that could sell it to China. Platforms like Facebook and YouTube are blocked in China. And Beijing said last year that it would oppose a sale of TikTok. Well, y'all, I guess the, the fight with us and the Chinese is getting worse. It's getting worse. D. Johnson, thank you for the super chat. It's so ghetto here. These corrupt politicians can agree by 80% against TikTok, but not free college, universal health care, lower grocery prices, etc. Or let's even talk about the agriculture and planting female trees so that people would be able to, I don't know, have a normal balanced sinus system. Like, what the fuck is going on? Do y'all know that, that that's why your sinuses are crazy? They decided to kill all of the female trees during Reconstruction, which is like right around like 1900s, 1920, around this time. They started killing all of the female trees and they would prohibit the sale of the seeds. For a certain amount of time, you can only get certain seeds, genetically modified seeds, all of that type of shit, right? A couple of reasons. One reason is so everybody has to work to eat. Because if you can just walk down the street and pick up a fruit off of a tree on a sidewalk, then you don't have to work in order to eat. They want you to work in order to eat. America is an industrialized uh, country that basically breeds people to work in corporations, slave-like, you know, type of thing industry like it's a slave thing though like it's it's meant like that's why you work most of your life that's why you don't have a lot of vacation that's why you don't have a lot of time off because technically you are an incentivized slave i'm just saying not not just y'all me too okay because youtube be like bitch if you don't make 50 11 videos a week we're not going to give you the check that you want okay and we're going to slow the people that come to your channel we're going to slow when you can you know subscribers hold it like just all kind of shit to impede the process to keep you from actually rising because they want to keep everybody down. You got to keep everybody down so they can keep buying and paying into this system. But they get rid of the female trees, which causes more pollen because the male trees are putting out fertilization, pollen, and they have nowhere to go because there are no female trees to receive the pollen to then grow the fruit. 
So the extra piling all on your car that's fucking up your sinuses and, you know, makes your eyes cry for no reason, all that shit, nose hurting, okay? All of that is because your government decided to get rid of all of the female trees, <laughs> okay? Just a little, little fun fact, little fun fact, okay? Um, but yes, they did that also because, you know, hate women, um, <laughs> hate the female, okay? We got, we got to get this bitch out of here in as many ways as possible. Okay, that's why we must preserve bees. The only way shit's getting pollinated these days. <laughs> okay. Mm. No, beehives be out here, but at one point, y'all, at one point the bee the bees had disappeared for like two good summers. Everybody was like, "What happened to the fucking bees?" Like <laughs> they were just gone. Like they were just like, "We'll see y'all later," and then they came back. Okay, yeah, no, my nose hurt right now. I can't stand it. Okay, this I feel like about this other child. Listen, but anyway, I'm gonna just say my opinion about the TikTok ban is that I don't like it. Um, I even hate the 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 mentality that so many people have that oh, well, now they gonna have to go get real jobs. Man, fuck a real job. Fuck a real job. If I can make money entertaining people on the internet, why the fuck can't I make money entertaining people on the internet? What's wrong with y'all? Like, why should we always be in this mind state of, of trying to force everybody into this slavery? God forbid people be happy in their life. God forbid people don't have to struggle for every goddamn thing. And let's be clear, TikTok is not easy, y'all. TikTok is not easy and it's really not as advantageous as YouTube is. That's why it's best for promoting and not really for having a full-blown channel or anything like on YouTube. So I thank God Google is American and white. Because otherwise, like, where would my check go? You know what I'm saying? What girl, you want me to go back working for people in the news? I think not. I, girl, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, you guys, I hope that this is resolved. I don't want them to ban TikTok. I do believe on some level, y'all just don't want people to have access to information. Y'all don't want people to have endless access to information. And there's something about TikTok, being able to watch people all over the world like just sitting on just sitting on TikTok live, y'all. They just be sitting on TikTok live. <laughs> and they be all over the world. You just be watching people. It's crazy. People in Africa, people in China, people all different types of countries. And you get to just see what their life is like. That shit's amazing to me. They really don't want that type of connectivity. Um, because over time, I think it does bring people together as much as everybody thinks it creates all this discourse. I think it also still brings people together that otherwise would not meet each other or not know each other. And I do think that we don't want, you know, the civilians to uprise. We don't want the poor people that don't recognize they're really poor. We don't want them to realize what's going on. We don't. So TikTok, um, you know, is just putting out too much fucking information. <laughs> okay. TikTok doesn't care about black people either. I don't think they do. I don't think they do. Um, I often feel like I get sanctioned so much on that app. I just don't even waste my time at this point. Um, it's just like I, I'm not. I'm not about to keep dealing with this. I don't even really care. Like just like I didn't really care about Twitter. They took my my, my goddamn Twitter over nothing. I can't even repeal it. Every time I repeal it, the, the link doesn't work. They just want me to pay for it, and I'm not paying for it. Like get out of here with that. A lot of the apps are losing their shit, y'all. Like, thank God. Yes, thank God for Discord. Thank God for YouTube, okay? Because ain't nobody got time for all of the things that go on on these other apps. Y'all always trying to stress somebody out. But speaking of shit going on on, on the apps, did y'all see this girl? girl make a post earlier where she was like, I'm not afraid to admit who people scare me. Now, although that may trigger some people, y'all have to understand some of us are just genuinely traumatized. Now, I didn't grow up in the hood, but I worked in the hood. And when I tell y'all that was one of the most miserable experiences of my entire life, you could not look at them wrong. They wanted to fight. You could not be quiet. If you are quiet, it's you think you're all that. You think you're better than us. It's so bad. I was washing my hair today and I got flashbacks of when they used to tease me and try and call me broke because I was not wearing a lace wig. Like they just say the most uneducated, ignorant stuff I've ever heard in my life. I'm broke because I want to wear my natural hair that God blessed me with. And because I'm not gluing something to a nasty, stinking stocking cap every five seconds, that mean I'm broke. Like, 
the energy is just so miserable. So I seen this girl make a post earlier. Okay. Hmm. Girl, you're one of those women who leveled up and now trying to show on people, girl, please. This ain't hard. To how do you know that's how that how, how do you know that that's how this person speaks? How do you know that? Like that there's nothing about the way she's speaking in this comment that should make you have this accent. I don't like the accent. Achieve. You just found a colorist man. I could get a larger bag with a European man. Period. Pool. Pasta and lobster. Who said that? She didn't say any of. She didn't say anything about lobster in period pools. First of all, nobody in the real world talks like that. She didn't say anything like that. You're talking like that. You're weird. <laughs> the girl said, "Girl, you one of those women who leveled up and now try to shit on people." Girl, please, this ain't hard to achieve. You just found a colorist man. I could get a larger bag with a European white man. That's all the girl said. None of that was the period pool and the extra stank you was putting on it. You will never get any type of high value man to marry you or take you seriously talking like that. Again, I don't know what y'all think high value is because I personally think y'all think that means that a man makes a lot of money. When the truth of the matter is anybody that's dated, anybody knows that a man having a lot of money does not mean you're going to have a, a great relationship. It doesn't mean he's going to value you the way you value his bank account or his paycheck. The most you'll get is a couple of dollars in a hotel room because that is all you sound like you're worth. People in the room. That's all you sound like you're worth? My girl. This filter really has like, oh, like uh, it is giving colorism. I ain't gonna lie. It is. I think that because she says you found a colorist man, you decided to go in because you know that probably a lot of your allure comes from the fact that you're light complected and not from anything else. Real world where things actually matter. Don't talk like that. Second, as far as a European man goes, been there, done that. I don't know why you hood rats seem to think European men or some type of trophy or savior, maybe because you're in survival mode and you're trying to get out of the slums that you're in. So you see another race to help you and do what your own father couldn't do. Ooh. But my father was in my life and he was a great black man. Hmm. And then there's this. Girl, I love a picture without a filter. I love a picture without a filter, girl. It was given elitist in classes. I did agree with some of the things she said. I've talked about all the time about how hood people, and I'm talking about hood people that are hood people, not black people, not people that just so happen to live in a hood. I'm talking about hood people. There are people that live in a hood and they are not hood, but there are people that live all over the place and they're fucking hood, okay? Um, really what it means is they have a very predatory, fucked up mindset. They pretend to be cool and nice and all of that, but they're snakes, they're snakes. Also, a lot of the times they're extremely, um, you know, what I'm saying a easily agitated, always want to fight somebody like they're always in their lower chakra. OK, so I do understand what she's talking about. Like, I get it. But ultimately, the second clip is the one that really let us know how you felt and what you were really on, which was, I guess, getting online to do some hate farming. Y'all know how people love to get online and upset everybody to go viral. Um, that's what it seems like. And maybe she was doing it because she needed to make some extra money because apparently she got arrested. And you know how when you get arrested, you got to go pay lawyer's fees. You know what I'm saying? You got to go pay lawyer's fees. So that's why I'm just kind of like, you know, you shouldn't talk. <laughs> You shouldn't talk when you got a record yourself, okay? You, you, you shouldn't talk. But let, let's see, girl, look, that filter had her head fucked up. Do you hear me? That filter had her head fucked up. She thought she was better than somebody because the filter made her look like her nose was smaller. Girl, go to hell. Anyway, let me read. Girl, battery, who you beat up? Let me see if it say. Um, TikToker, the kept wife that we posted Monday, she went viral after explaining how she loves black people, but hates hood people. She described hood people as loud, angry, and always wanting to fight over nothing. 
Well, turns out the kept wife, whose real name is Danielle Johnson, was arrested, charged, and booked in Hillsborough County Jail back in February for battery. And the girl, she was projecting. She was talking about herself. In the United States, criminal battery or simple battery is the use of force against another. Danielle stated that she was happy Tampa is segregated, so she's able to avoid her people. Now, wait a minute. The smile on your face. Now, was you somebody that just so happened the, the hood person caught the right one? Because that might also be a scenario. I don't know. Either way, social users who are familiar with her have also accused her of having a son that she doesn't take care of and being a retired stripper. Tampa, which Danielle describes as some holy, holy whites only land, has about 43 strip clubs, more strip clubs than hospitals. While we can't confirm everything this young lady may have done in her past, we can confirm 100% that she will fight and was locked the hell up at one point. She might say that's hood-ish. See, she, hold up. <laughs> Some might say that's hood-ish of her. But she might describe it as a white-collar crime. Hilarious. Hilarious. Yes, that's D. Hilarious. Girl... 33 getting arrested for battery i want to know girl who you was fighting that's what i want to know now now i'm invested who was you fighting <laughs> girl who you got into the brawl with is the question i really want to know you know what i'm saying yeah look i love a good this you this you because you was talking shit is this you <laughs> girl People really go online making bold statements to go viral and end up with somebody pulling up their whole record and posting it on the internet. Real embarrassing. Like, I'm looking for a response. Oh, she beat up the husband, according to the comments. That's why she got this smile on her face. Caught that nigga cheating, huh? Now, see, if you the kept wife, why you getting mad? You know these niggas cheat. What you be, girl, don't fight nobody because, like, girl, what? Don't fight nobody because they cheating on you. That's usually the only reason, Uh, you know. Let me see. It look, oh, hey, Cynthia. It looks like it's DV battery, which means she put hands on her boyfriend slash girlfriend. Okay. Girl. Yeah, that's me laughing because I thought it was funny. <laughs> Talking shit. Ass got a record. Okay. <clears throat> Hold up. Let me read some of these. D Johnson, I read this one. Thank you. Uh, Brittany 12, thank you for being a member for eight months. Nah, they taking it away because of the Israel and Gaza war. Israel posted on Twitter saying TikTok needs to go. It's censorship. Ah, that makes sense. That makes sense. It does. Kayuna Smoochie, thank you for becoming a member. We appreciate y'all around here. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Summer D. Thank you. You are definitely a big sister in my head. Can't wait to join you and the Bonbons on one of those amazing trips soon. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for that. Thank you. Yes, we're going we're gonna to talk about that in the ad, okay, in a, in a minute, okay? The next trip that's coming up. Girl, I'm excited. I can't wait to go. I can't. But anyway, y'all, that's what's going on with her. <laughs> She don't like hood people, but she hood because it seemed like you hood if you can't control yourself. Why you hitting that man? Because he cheating, girl, what he did? Nah, was he putting his hands on you? Like, let us know. We need a response. Okay, I need to know what's going on. Anyway, y'all, we moving on. Y'all, if you are, you know, one of the members, you heard me talking about Tammy Waka. And Timu Tammy, which is Waka's new girlfriend. I forgot her name, but she looks just like Tammy. And she's online making Tammy's post about herself. And now little Charlie has gotten involved, okay? Tammy's daughter with the message, all right? Because Tammy posted her with her man, but she not posted her man's face. She said, just leaving this here, this is not Tammy. This is her daughter. Tammy's um, Instagram is Charlie's Angel and uh, Charlie's Instagram is Tammy's Angel. Y'all, they, they love to confuse us. Anyway, uh, she said, just leaving this here because females need to tread lightly for real. Never gave washed up ever. This is a response to old girl talking about her mom being washed up. Okay. Letting you know my mom has a man, been had a man. 
And nobody is sweating Waka. Nobody is trying to let it be known that they can still have Waka. Like, no, girl. Everybody already knows that. Um, so then somebody said, Trap Star, whoever this is, said, posting this after Waka posted his new woman makes Tammy seem bothered. We never seen an arm or hand until he posted his new boo. I like Tammy, but she seems bothered by his happiness. Ma'am, and you would be a lie. You would be someone who missed it. Because Tammy had posted about, you know, posted her with her man a while ago. Like, she didn't show his face, but, like, we've seen it. And also, Charlie has mentioned it before. Like, this isn't the, the first time this has been mentioned. Where have you been? Okay? But it has been understood for a while now, Brian, that both of them have been in relationships with other people. Okay? So Charlie responded, girl, bye. Posting this because sis think coming for the women he had a child with is... Child, you mean the woman? The woman he had a child with is knowing that the child has to approve the relationship. One word and she gone. That's why I said tread lightly. And then it's a whole bunch of dodo birds in the comments talking about what you mean the, a woman he had a child with. Yes, they, they have a child together because he considers the daughter he adopted his daughter as he should. This is how I know a lot of y'all don't know what high value is because to me, a high value man is a man that will raise someone else's child out of love and consideration for the mother and the child. That's a high value man to me. Someone that provides for not only his biological family, but the family that he has grown to have in his community that are around him, that are in his household. I don't know why y'all think, oh, a high value man not going to deal with that. A high value man not going to raise somebody else. Girl, that's not a high value man. That's a selfish nigga. What is you talking about? What are you talking about? Oh, my God. I really don't understand where a lot of y'all grew up at. I don't. Because around my way, that's a stand up man. Girl, I don't understand. This, this girl. <laughs> I know, I know you heard what Charlie said. I know you heard what Charlie said. Girl, anyway, listen, it's 826 of y'all in here. We're about to get into Cardi B. Just hilarious versus don't call me white girl and more on Wendy Williams child. So go ahead and like this video. <laughs> Yes. Do not forget, you guys, we're going to Phuket, Thailand. We only have four more beds left, okay, in the luxury villa that we will be staying at while we are in Phuket, Thailand. Yes, God. Hold up. My bad. Yes, God, y'all. June 13th through the 20th, we will be in Thailand for the first time. Reset by Design Wellness. Make sure you follow Reset by Design Wellness on Instagram, as well as going to their website and signing up if you want to come along, girl. Okay, we not already told y'all these trips be off the chain. This is when I went to Ghana, okay? Girl, I saw the people. I was on the continent. The accommodations were amazing. The food was great, okay? We had an amazing time. We connected. We relaxed. We related, and we motherfucking released, okay? Do y'all see this? Yes, God, okay? You want to go go on ahead and hurry up and sign up before it's too late. Plus, don't forget these plane tickets. You know how they be, girl. So you want to get them while they're getting this good. All right. Make sure y'all go to resetbydesignwellness.com to sign up so you can luxuriate, okay, and live life. And don't just be watching people on the internet do it, girl. Do it yourself. You know what I'm saying? All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and get into the Cardi B of it all. So Cardi B has a new album that she's coming out with and she released two singles this past week, if I'm correct. Okay, hold up. Let me, cause I want to make sure I have, okay. I want to, I want to make sure that I have it right. Okay. So the first one was like what freestyle? That was the first one. Okay. And then the second one that she just came out with a video for overnight is enough which she looks amazing in. Y'all know if Cardi not going to do nothing, she going to get the looks right. Okay. So shout out to her for that. I can't, I can't wait to hear more of what she got coming. Cause y'all know I like Cardi. Okay. So 
Cardi B making sense. I don't think women going to like this much truth in one message. You know, I really hate you niggas that get online and talk like y'all know how women think and what they feel because essentially most women are going 50-50 or something close to it. And when I say that, I say that because most women work, especially most women in your black ass demographic, they work, their men work. And then they probably assume more of the household hold duties as well. So the idea that all of the girls are just delusional enough to think that we live in a time frame and under uh, uh, the financial um, restrictions that we live under in this country at this time, we are in a recession. Things are extremely expensive and they're just basically making corporations out of everything, corporations out of what we eat, corporations out of what we, uh, where we live, buying up all of the fucking houses and shooting the skyrocket in the prices. So regular people can't just own land. They're all, you know what I'm saying? Like it's so much shit going on in real fucking life. And y'all really think that as a whole, black women have an issue with paying half of the bills. I, I don't think I don't think most black women have an issue with paying half the bills. I think if you're online pump faking, like you live in the tax bracket that allows you to sit your ass at home while a nigga go and work and you ain't got to pay. Girl, this is not the 70s, bitch. This is not good times. It didn't even make sense for Florida to stay at home. If you're going to be the type of bitch that like a nigga, you want a nigga to take care of you and everything, but it's like, all right, you have to like, Pick a balance, like it's like you cannot just be a bitch. It's like, oh, and my man take care of me. He does the bills, but it's like, what do you do? What are you contributing? Like it's like, all right, like you can't be complaining. Like, oh, I cook, I clean every day. It's like, okay, but you don't work. You don't contribute to the house. So I just feel like it's like, and like, I feel like cooking and cleaning is contributing to the house. I don't know what the fuck Cardi's talking about. Like sometimes people be like, oh, so this is like really controversial, right? Cool. I feel like it's very controversial when like. Be like, oh, I don't go 50 50, but it's like, all right. So if you and your man make the same amount of, of money, right? Mm -hmm. But only your man is the one that paying all the bills. How y'all ever gonna save up to like buy a house or buy a business? Cause he's never gonna be able to afford to. So it's like, well, Cardi. I think you're on here making excuses for you being up there paying all the offsets bills because it looked like y'all making the same amount of money, but you really making more money than him. Um, that's what it sounds like to me. Uh, but I'm gonna just keep it a buck about what she's actually saying here, and it doesn't really make sense. If two people make the same amount of money, then two people are putting towards the household or saving. That's how that should go. If the woman isn't spending her money on any of the household things, then her money, I'm talking about bills in the household, her money should be go going to the grocery shopping. It should be going to, you know, whatever other amenities that that is required. You know what I'm saying? She might pay her own uh cell phone bill. She might pay her own car note and he'll pay all of the bills at the house. And she might pay like a few utilities or some shit like that. But at the end of the day, Cardi, it sounds like you want women to do more than 50-50. That's what it sounds like you're saying. Like certain things is like a, a joint thing to do. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, like, it's like a work together. But I just be feeling like sometimes people, like the internet really be having people fucked up from like real reality type shit. So it's like... And I understand what she means when she says that because it's a lot of conversation online and just in general of promoting that women are stupid if they're not being taken care of by some man. If you're not, if you're not, you know, with a man that's paying more, you know, that's that's taking care of you more than you, like you're stupid. And it's like, but that's not realistic. <laughs> that's not realistic to most people's lives. And even if your man is making more money than you, he should be making more money than you. We live in a fucking patriarchy and legally it is not required for anybody to pay y'all an equal wage. So it makes sense that he would be making more money than you. But essentially, I feel like contributing to a household is absolutely labor, labor. And I also feel like there's absolutely nothing wrong with a woman doing absolutely fucking nothing if she is being you know, made to be a housewife, having children. No, I don't think she should have to work necessarily if she doesn't want to. Now, do I feel like it's smart for a woman to ever be primarily dependent on a man? No, I think that's dumb. I do. I think you should always have your own bag. And I think as a woman, most of the women that I know in my life, 
whether they know it or not, want to be fulfilled by their own dreams. They want to be fulfilled by whatever their own uh, wants and needs are. Even if society is telling them something different, a lot of the times they'll be unhappy because they need something for themselves. So there is a, a, a part of this that I agree with, that women should always have their own passions, their own goals and things that they want to do in this life because to only be a wife and a mother to other people is to me a waste of a life if that's all you are doing because I just feel like that everybody can do that and still do more for what they want to do for themselves and I think we grew up feeling like oh it's okay to just want to be a wife and a mother but nobody really just wants that and if you saying that I feel like you lying or you just haven't gotten to that point yet where you realize that other people's lives can't fulfill you Angela thank you for the super chat I love Cardi but I hate the misogyny here the work um SAH spouses do is stay at home spouses do is contributing. I hate the devaluing of women's labor. No, I agree. I absolutely agree. I don't like that. You're talking about what do you do? Bitch, if I'm cooking and cleaning and making sure this household is comfortable and he got everything he needs to do whatever it is he needs, bitch, that's labor. That's work. And I should be paid for it. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all stay at home, people. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all better start. Getting it in contracts when y'all marry motherfuckers. Everybody that wants to be a traditional wife and all of that. If a nigga can't afford to be putting a certain amount of money aside from his paycheck to make sure that if ever y'all decide to separate and depart, you will still be taken care of. You'll have 401k. You'll have insurance because you are literally giving up working years in order to labor for a man. And if he decides he doesn't want to be with you or decides that, they, you know, he wants to go and find a younger model, whatever the fuck, if at any point this relationship relationship comes to an end which 50 50 chance it will what's gonna happen you're gonna be older with no history of work with a man that can barely pay you enough money for child support let alone alimony and child support so that you can live the same way you were living before y'all divorced people don't like to think about none of this shit Y'all just think it's cute to have some nigga paying for everything, not even thinking about the fact that you have to think about your future. So if you're going to be a stay at home parent, wife, husband, whatever the fuck, make sure that the person that's making the bulk of the income is also investing in your future, whether y'all are together or not, because technically they are your employer. It is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, that's until worse. We say it's like all right. So your your mom and dad used to work every single day, right? Mm -hmm. So your mom and dad used to work every single day, so your mom could save her money and what buy purses, and your dad just pay the bills. That's not how it works. Doesn't no. mean your mom was in the house cooking and cleaning every day. Your dad was working, or they was both working to to pay both the bills. Like y'all be acting like y'all don't know what the fuck that is like no more. Like come on. And your mom money was your was your dad money, and your dad money was your mom money. Like, it was it was like that. It wasn't. <laughs> that's not how that ever went y'all in real life amongst middle class people if both people are working the dad's money belongs to everybody the mama's money if she's smart enough should have been putting that shit to the side for when and if that shit don't work out she makes so she got some goddamn money <laughs> like that it was, it, like it's like I, that's what i'm saying like i'm not a feminist anymore because it's like sometimes it's like y'all bitches don't be living in the real world right Y'all not living there. Y'all be talking about my money is my money and his money is my money. Yes. And it has always been that way. <laughs> yeah, they mad. They mad, y'all. But in real life, a lot of times, that, that's really how it goes. Like, if the man is making more money, that's usually how it goes. You know what I'm saying? Because he's going to pay for more of the shit. But you're going to do more of the labor. That's why my money is my money. Because you make more money than me usually. And my money is enough to sustain the shit that I have to do for the household. So I don't have to come and ask you for money all the time. Like in real life, that's the reason why a woman, a woman's money is her money. And his money is their money. Because his money is enough to cover the whole household. Her money is enough to cover her nails, the kids, school uniforms, groceries. You know what I'm saying? The stuff that the kids need for school, unless it's like a big bill or something like that. The woman money usually goes to like the, the other stuff. And the man's money goes to the, you know, the, the house and the utilities and the insurance and, and all of that type of stuff. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't know what anybody's talking about, but, and you know around my tax bracket that's 
how it was. <laughs> okay, because essentially we still understood that my dad had the power in the dynamic. So if they were ever to divorce, he was going to be okay. And my mom would be okay, but she might struggle a little more than he would. Like that was just understood. Anyway, Miko Spice, thank you for the super chat. As a former stay-at-home mom, I prefer to work because if you're not careful, financial abuse will, will slink in. Yes, it's not easy to give up all for one household, especially um, especially when expected. No, this is very true. I, that's why I tell you all the time, nobody will ever do that to me again. Like my daddy was the breadwinner. So essentially, we all got financially abused. If you don't do what I tell you to do, then I'm not helping you with school. I, you don't you don't go, you don't want to go to the school that I want you to go to, then I'm not helping you with nothing. Yeah. I, I know what financial abuse is like. So that's another reason why I don't see it um for when women are such a strong proponent of just letting somebody take care of everything for them, because you're going to end up like being at their behest. And in their control and not being free to do whatever it is you need to do for yourself at some point because you decided to give up your autonomy to another individual. It's not smart. And it's really just like some type of reinstallation of slavery. But everybody thinks because they're getting incentivized for it or because you think you're in love, the trick of love. Um, and not to say that love is not real, y'all, but to say that I think love is used to manipulate women into labor. And I think that men lie to women and tell them that they love them so that they can trick them out of coochie and labor. I do. Um, because if you really love somebody, then there will be moments of unselfishness about your love. And a lot of the times it's really not like that. All right. So let's move on to more from Cardi, girl. We did not know this. I know this. Like, my gra like nah, th there's some serious story. Like, I don't like to put my family business okay. like, but he used to push weight and everything. And there was like this one time that like, like, you know, like he lived in Tennessee and whatever. So he ain't really told like my grandma that like he was dealing with somebody over there. And then like he had a he he had like a she she really she want to tell his story, but she don't want to tell his story. A kid out there. And, you know, like that's Glorilla's dad and everything. So that's why like make us related. Are you serious? Yeah. A lot of people oh, yeah. don't know this. Like oh. my grand, like not nah, this is some serious story. Like I don't like to put my family business. Okay. Like, but he used to push weight and everything. And there was like this one time that like, like you know, like he lived in Tennessee and whatever. So he ain't really told like my grandma that like he was dealing with somebody over there. And then like he had a he he. Okay, I'm gonna explain. So basically, Cardi is saying that Glorilla is they have it wrong. Her half biological. Th this doesn't make any sense. I don't know who wrote the the shit for this, but this is not right. Okay, she's explaining that her grandfather cheated on her grandmother, had an outside baby, and that outside baby had Glorilla, and Glorilla is her cousin. Okay, we did not know that Glorilla was her cousin. I don't know when they figured out that Glorilla was her cousin, but that's fucking crazy that Cardi B and Glorilla are first cousins. That's crazy. I hope they do a song together. Y'all, Glow knew, <laughs> yeah, Glow. Trap the little pussy hoes in some shell toes. Yeah, ho, listen. Listen, yeah, Glow. Listen, it's everything, girl. Listen, that new, that new Glorilla song. Y'all love Glorilla. She, she one of my favorite. Okay, I love me some Glorilla, child. What her, what her Regina Greer looking ass. Okay, Summer D, thank you for being a member for four months. Me and my husband do the same thing, and he make more, but I have multiple streams of income. You're spot on, girl. Cause. <laughs> Y'all know I'm married and I actually watch people be in a marriage and be together. And, and, you know, my everybody in my family was married. You know what I'm saying? All of my aunts, you know, have been paired off for years. <laughs> like everybody was with the same nigga they met in high school and all of that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like my uncle was the only one, you know, I mean, he had a, a girlfriend for a long time, but he had like, you know, at least two, three wives before I even got here. So, you know, and my other uncle had, you know, one that he had the kids with and then one wife for a very long time. So I, you know, I've seen people be in marriages my entire life. So I know what that shit really looked like versus what people pretend that it is. You know what I'm saying? Lead prosecutor on Trump trial stepped down. Miko Spice, thank you for the super chat. Lead prosecutor. That doesn't mean... That don't mean that it's her, right? Because she technically is 
uh, the lead prosecutor, right? Fanny? Fanny, tell me you didn't step down, girl. I hope she didn't. Um, Nathan Way. Oh, okay. Right, 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 right. I thought he was a top prosecutor. Anyway, girl, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I, as long as it's Nathan and not Fanny, girl, that's all that matters. <laughs> long as it's Nathan and not Fanny, okay? Um, but let's go ahead and continue to press on. But y'all, I did not know that about Cardi and Glow. That's what's up. So things are continuing to be messy with Just Hilarious. <sighs> Don't call me white girl has responded. Whenever you get this motherfucking clip, somebody send you, because somebody going to send it to you, that I called you transphobic, homophobic, the same thing Mandy did, I dare you say something like that to me. <laughs> I dare you, bitch. <laughs> To tell me you gonna see me anywhere. Gotta tell you this. It's March in the beginning of March. We ain't waiting to April. <laughs> when you call, I'ma come. We can meet back in Yud. I'm always in B more. Mm. Like you got me twisted. But that's why I don't wanna go through none of that with none yeah, of we're them. We're not going there. I don't want to go through it. And my niggas keep me real on point so I don't go through it because I know y'all don't want it. Cause yeah. you can't beat me. Just hilarious can't beat me. Mandy can't beat me. I'm ghetto like that. You can't beat me, bitch. But she had to be. She looked white. But I ain't appreciate it because I was nice to you. I was kind to you. I let you on my platform after my producer forced me to. Right. So you wasn't fucking with her. So what's the problem? <laughs> so I ain't like that. And don't give me that. It wasn't good. But no, it was. Whenever you get this motherfucking clip, somebody send you because somebody going to send it to you that I called you transphobic, homophobic, the same thing Mandy did. I dare you say something like that to me. <laughs> I dare you, bitch. <laughs> To tell me you gonna see me anywhere. Gotta tell you this. It's March in the beginning of March. We ain't waiting April. <laughs> Work. Transsexual Madison, do not call nobody else to try to get me on the phone to hash things out after you see that this ain't going your way. Cause this did not have to be up like this, not have to end up like this. Don't call Jason Lee, because that's not my friend. Do not call Mona. Don't call me white girl. That's not my friend either. Don't call nobody who we mutually know to try to talk to me. Okay. If I wanted to so I can make us like a whole, like a gang. I can start a call with them. Okay. Because they're mine. Yeah. I don't have to send them to school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I, choose I think to. you should. I do. Yeah. I do. I'm just saying if I wanted to. Okay. So here's the thing. I don't understand why Don't Call Me White Girl is upset. If you want to call just hilarious, homophobic, transphobic, that's fine. That's fine. But why you acting like when she said y'all wasn't friends, that upset you when you didn't even want her on your show? Y'all weren't friends. Y'all aren't friends. She's just saying to Maddie, don't do like you did last time, trying to have no come to Jesus moment with me, calling people that I'm not even really friends with. We just cool. I might have worked with them, but we not friends. And you know y'all not friends. So I don't understand the point in getting upset about it. And now you're threatening to whip people ass. If they say something back to you and it's like, listen, at the end of the day, you could threaten to whip my ass. And if you catch up with me, you might. But I'm still going to say what the fuck I'm going to say. If I was just hilarious, I'd have been like, and, and if I got an issue with it, you know what I'm saying? I'm still going to say something. I'm still going to get on the breakfast club and pop my shit about you threatening me and all of this shit. Like the fuck? Mona? Mona, baby. Y'all not friends. What we mad for? You ain't even want her on your show. Come on now. Yeah, it is giving. It's giving we needed a moment. It, that's what it's giving. It's giving we needed a moment. And it be like that sometimes on social media, y'all. Y'all know you got to stay. You got to keep your name on the post and everything. Because if you don't keep your name on the post, girl, your views go down. You know what I'm saying? I ain't hating. I like, I like, uh, <laughs> I like Mona. Let's move on. Wendy Williams facing federal tax lien due to unpaid taxes. Apparently, legal documents obtained by the news outlet shows that the former talk show host purchased her $4.5 million condo in 2021, but the feds claim Wendy owes them $568,451.57. This unpaid balance is a result of her owing big balances for her federal taxes for the years of 2019 to 2021. You mean during this time that she hasn't been well and then placed under conservatorship as 
of right now, there aren't any documents showing that this balance has been taken care of. The news publication also said that they have reached out to Wendy's court appointed guardian of her finances, but haven't received a response yet. What is them people doing with Wendy's money? Y'all, this is so upsetting to me. And I really feel like this is because Wendy really put too much trust in Kevin. Like, that's really what I feel. I feel like she put way too much trust in Kevin. And this is another issue. Even when you are making your own money and you decide that you want to make your man feel like a man and put him in charge of your shit. And now y'all are divorced and people are coming to you and you ain't handling your shit because you having a hard time and you don't have nobody else because you didn't invest in any other relationships. You didn't invest in making sure you had people on top of your shit. You know, like I just kind of feel like Wendy really was letting Kevin handle a lot of things. And when he was no longer in the picture, everything just kind of falls to the wayside. And it does sound like the guardian is not doing their job, but we already knew that. So neighbors get into this. It looks like Wendy Williams has another money problem on her hands. This time from her ex-husband, Kevin Hunter. If having a baby on her and ruining their family wasn't enough, Kevin has filed a motion to judge um, to a judge to get two years worth of back divorce payments from Wendy because she stopped paying them shortly before her guardianship started. She shouldn't have never have had to pay you shit if you ask me. Because essentially you were working for her <laughs> and you really, really fumbled your own bag getting that girl pregnant. This is the reason why I feel like she shouldn't have had to give him alimony because you should have been making sure you were good. You're a fucking grown ass man that knew you were eventually going to leave Wendy for this younger woman. You should have been putting your ducks in a row. And the fact that every other month you online, you know, being uh, 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 ratted on for constantly trying to get more and more money from her. She don't have it. She ain't got it. Kevin, go get a fucking job. Jesus Christ. Talking about this put him in a financial bind. That lady don't even have her, not even have her full faculties right now. You still asking for money. Use a leech. I rely on the, the severance pay for my living expenses and haven't been without this income for 23 months has affected me greatly. Through her guardianship, Kevin wants Wendy to immediately pay all severance payments, which may be due and owing at the time of this court order. On top of this, Kevin is even trying to dip into Wendy's retirement money. Child, he claims her guardian told him he could have access to her financial records, but they've yet to make good on their promise, probably because they felt intimidated and lied to get you out their face. On December 8, 2022, I attended a mediation with Wendy's counsel and Wendy's New York court appointed guardian attorney, Sabrina Morrissey. In that mediation, Wendy's counsel and guardian agreed to provide statements to accounts and bank records that claimed to have gotten permission from the New York court to provide. And that mediation, though, a source close to the situation says the judge told Kevin there wasn't any money. Kevin doesn't believe it, though, and will continue to fight for his part of the money. Oh, Lord, I just I want him to fall and break a hip. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just I want him to fall and break a hip because you can go and be security for some fucking body. Go get a job. Sitting up there begging for that lady money all the goddamn time. And you know she going through it. The Wendy Williams lawsuit filed by her guardian has been unsealed. According to the Hollywood Reporter, the complaint was unsealed on Thursday and claims that the contract broker by A&E Networks, Lifetime's parent company, to shoot the documentary was not valid since Williams did not have the legal or mental capacity to authorize her participation in the title at the time. Ain't that some shit going to say that that woman didn't even have a right to, to, to be in her own documentary? Williams was allegedly told that the film would be positive and beneficial to her image. It remains unknown who created the company that entered into a contract with the network, allowing Williams to... So y'all don't even know... Who orchestrated the fucking documentary? Are you serious? This is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, I don't know what the... Yeah, this is crazy what's happening to Wendy. This is so crazy. I want to know who authorized the contract for her to do the documentary. Who? Y'all... I'm sad for Wendy. I really am. I don't think she deserves this at all. This shit is crazy. Anyway, y'all, we're going to take a quick little break and we're going to come back for the last topic. Miss Drea Michelle 
and Joey, you know, Joey Chavis and y'all being mad at other people's coochies. We're back. LJ, thank you for the super chat. My granny says she don't even help with proper, she don't even help with proper taxes. She only paid the phone bill and she is a retired dental hygienist. All right. You know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do wrong. The L factor. Thank you for the super chat. Happy Friday, Bondi in the chat. I know that's right. Girl, listen, you said your granny, right? <laughs> your granny. Okay. <laughs> You ain't say your mama, okay? We talking about y'all got to think about the times, okay? The times we are in, girl, they not the same no more. Y'all, we talked about Drea, I feel like. I, I feel like I've already talked about Drea, but maybe I didn't talk about it on YouTube in this way. But I'm going to just say, at the end of the day, I don't really see an issue with Drea having a baby by a young man who she was poking. Um, essentially I do not feel like Drea forced her coochie on the young man. I don't, I don't think she had to force the coochie on the young man. She looks damn near his same age. So she's attractive and she's Drea. So he wanted the coochie. Okay. She wanted a new baby. She said herself, I want another baby. I don't necessarily need to be in a relationship with the man. I just want another baby. The man gave her a baby. When he decided not to wear a condom, which at 22, 21, he knows how this works. He didn't wear a condom. He got her pregnant. He wanted to get her pregnant. I think he thinks that that means he'll have access to her all the time. And he always wants access to her. Y'all got to watch poor things. Because one of the things that they, one of the themes was how women being whores and men judging them for being whores and still wanting the women. And that's what this makes me think about. All of these niggas online judging Drea, but they never had a problem with old ass niggas like Puffy and, and you know, Russell Simmons and all of the rest of the Tyrese, all of these old ass niggas that go and get young girls because the young girls are all enamored by the money, right? It's cool. The girls deserve whatever happens to them in these relationships with older men because they wanted the money, right? So what's the difference from the 22-year-old want Andrea's coochie and getting the coochie? What, what's the problem? Right. Y'all not even, y'all not talking about Drake, who, who, who's walking around here with somebody's little sister, okay? But this is, ain't not the first time. They've been talking about Drake and the young girls in the industry for a while now. It's a whole bunch of people out there that y'all should have an issue with them having relationships with the young people the way that they do. But you don't. You don't. You don't have a problem with it. Usually you say something along the lines of, oh, I don't want to judge because, you know, I don't want nobody judging me. That's what a lot of y'all say, right? At the end of the day, both of these people are adults. Both of these people are grown. And if they decided to get together and have a child, then that's on them. I also feel like people continue to negate 
the fact that a 20 something year old young man with money is not the same thing as some green ass 20 something year old girl that's looking for a daddy figure. It's not really the same thing. He has the money. So he has a bigger part of the power dynamic in the relationship between him and Drea. It's really not as simple as, oh, she's older. So she's running the relationship. That, that's not technically the same thing. And yes, her son is the same age as him. Her son is 20 something years old. I understand this is upsetting to a lot of y'all because y'all feel like y'all would look at the young man and see y'all son. Y'all wouldn't just see another young man. I want to remind y'all that Drea probably did not raise her oldest son as much as she has these younger kids that she has now. I think she got another young kid. Okay. You could feel like it's gross. I personally feel like I would not be dating a 21 year old. Not me. Okay. But I'm also not judging because I feel like at the end of the day, we don't know the circumstances of the relationship. He's still a grown ass man. She's still a grown ass woman. And at the end of the day, I'm sorry, y'all. Fuck these kids. Like, fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Her son will be fine. Okay. Her son will be okay. I'm sure this isn't the worst of it. Okay. I'm sure neglecting him as a child was the worst of it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it may not be something I would do, but I don't like the way. Y'all are responding to Drea because it just kind of feels unwarranted. It just kind of feels unwarranted. Um, like that, you know, like she's really out here hurting the world out here. And it's like, no, not really. This is a young man that chose to insert his penis without a condom inside this old hoe and got her pregnant. And she'll have the money to make sure that the kids are taken care of. I'm sure she has. Y'all say she don't raise her kids. Child, I guess. I don't know. I'm not in that lady house. I'm not doing what she's doing, but I also don't feel like it's as bad as y'all are making it out to seem. Yes, Marcus Houston is totally different. Let's not forget he married that girl at 19. And here's the thing. If you don't have a problem with a 30-something-year-old woman having sex with a 20-year-old man, if you don't have a problem with that, then don't be getting all upset over the baby because it's the same act. It's the same act. I don't think she's trying to like trap him into being in a, a relationship or a marriage that's not what she was in it for i think she wanted the sperm i think she wanted the baby and i think she wanted the baby by a man that was willing to financially support it i really don't see the issue as much <laughs> i really really don't like he can go on his way just send a child support check i don't see the issue um he's not really being forced to do anything Either way, everybody's been online dragging Drea for dear God. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I'm at the bottom of a pile of heavy humans. Most hours of the day, I feel like I'm struggling to breathe. I think she was talking about her actual pregnancy and everybody thought she was talking about how it feels for everybody to be all up, you know, on her and everything, talking shit about her. But I don't think Drea cares. Drea has been the one that told y'all she was going to erase her hold'em. That lady don't care. She don't care. <laughs> and this, this kills the narrative that older women aren't desirable. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. And to me, a lot of you women out there, y'all having a problem with this, y'all finding this disgusting. I really don't care. That's your opinion. That's your prerogative, ma'am. You are entitled to have it. My issue comes in with niggas like this. Okay. Nobody asked you a motherfucking thing. Here you are. Kid by him or is that she had him or had him? Got the kid by him. Bro, she's passed goods, passed around goods. You you oh, so you think you're the guy because you got a pretty woman and she's pregnant. You or he could think he's the guy because he's young, nice looking, an NBA player. And yes, he does have the woman that a lot of you niggas would fuck. Yes. A lot of y'all probably have dreamt. Of having sex with Drea Michelle. And now he gets to. How is that any different than when um Nick Cannon got with uh uh, uh Mariah Carey? Like it's the same dynamic. You want an older woman that everybody wanted, and you got her. Why does that make him? Oh, you think you you think you the guy and you don't even realize she passed around goods? Y'all, I don't like that. I don't like when y'all refer to women as passed around goods. I, I don't I don't like that. I don't like when y'all feel like women are y'all leftovers. No, 
Women don't become trash all of a sudden after they have sex with you. That's an extension of how you feel about yourself, which means those women should have never fucked you in the first place. But essentially, I'm sure you lied and pump faked and did everything you could in order to convince that woman that you were somebody that she would want to lay out, lay down with. Y'all do that all the time. Y'all pretend to be good guys. Y'all pretend to be charming and all of that. You get the draws and then all of a sudden we meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So it's really annoying to me when y'all talk about women being used up goods, like women are just, you know, something that somebody put food in. You ate the food and now it's done with you, throw it away. No, she's a human being. She's a human being that still has a vagina, that still has her good looks and still has um, obviously a nice little bit amount of, you know, relevancy out here. Like it, it's real, real weird the way y'all talk about women that we know y'all would want. You don't know. Oh, you got to the party late. You don't know. She done, she done topped all of us off. Who the fuck is all of us? And somebody, he was speaking in general. Baby, you can't speak in general about a woman's sex life. At the end of the day, she still ain't fucked all of y'all. No, she still ain't sucked all of y'all's dicks. All of y'all still couldn't fuck. Like, what are you talking about? And that's the thing that aggravate me. Y'all think because a woman chooses who she decides to lay down with, that all of a sudden means that any nigga out here can get it. No, no. Unfortunately, my nigga, every nigga out here can't get it. But congratulations on the new, on the new 22 year old. Y'all big mad. Y'all are big, big mad because y'all feel like she got over on him. I don't think she got over on him. I think he's young and dumb, but he wanted what she was given. Gucci. Why not have a baby by her? She got good genes. <laughs> okay, you gonna make sure she get a nanny for the baby? Talking about in general. Ain't nobody talking in general topped us off. What the fuck? Dre is saying, I have never met this man a day in my life. I don't know why he feels the need to speak about me in a situation where he uses the term us. Brother, King, I don't know you. Didn't even know your name was London until today. Right now, this second, as I was asked about this. Excuse me. I've avoided the net altogether and most bitch ass tendencies I've endured for the past few days. I won't be lied on, though. Stay blessed. And then y'all in the comments acting like she has no right to say, ain't nobody fuck this nigga. Ain't nobody would fuck this nigga. Like, stop it. Stop it. Like, ugh, just whack. Is, all y'all niggas is whack. Just whack, lame, goofball, wish you could fuck ass niggas talking bad about a woman that would never lay down with you. It, it don't even make sense. I'm trying to see if I could, if I saved the Joey Chavis one because Joey Chavis is pregnant by a 25 year old and she's 35. Damn. I don't think I saved it. Hold up. And I don't see the problem with that. I don't know why the, the same men that love young girls and tell older women that they're uh what do they say about the um the women past 35 we hit the wall yeah once you hit 35 you've hit a wall and you're no longer desirable to the to the mass of men out there that's what y'all tell these women that's what y'all say and you got the nerve to be mad because the older women that y'all say y'all don't want are going to get younger men that want them. Y'all just don't want nobody to want the women, huh? Y'all, y'all, y'all just want to be able to, to have women out here. Y'all just want to be able to have women out here that can't find nobody, so they desperate to want to be with your ass, huh? That's what y'all want, and and that's just I'm sorry. Just like you can be an ancient ass nigga and still go and find another woman to want to lay down with you, have babies with you and, and act like you're going to do right by her. Just like that. There is always another nigga out there that don't give a fuck about who this woman and has sex with you yourself. Don't give a fuck about who this woman and has sex with. Okay. Okay. So here go, uh, Joey Chavez announcing her third child with Trevon Diggs. Okay. Now he's another, you know, He's a, I think he's a basketball player or something like that. Either way, y'all mad about this because she's 35 and he's 25. And I just kind of feel like I don't know why y'all mad about it. 
I don't know why y'all are mad about it. They're grown. 25 and 35 is not that much of a difference. Not really. Not really. <laughs> like I'm just saying, like it's just really not. A 10-year difference is really not that that much of a difference. If you ask me, especially at the ages of like 25, 35, those ages are to me very close together, even in mentality. If you are, you know, in any way mature. Okay, he's an NFL player. Football, got you. Okay. But they really online mad. And I feel like y'all are just mad because these older women are able to go and get these younger men who are more attractive than you, have babies, and completely take your old dried up ass out the equation like you were always projecting on the women in the first place. You mad because these women, if they keep themselves up, they are still able to go and find them some young rich baller that will happily put a baby inside of them and pay them child support every month. And won't be online like Tyrese crying about it every few weeks. Mm. Oh, love, let me see. Uh, all I'm seeing is they're mad women are doing the choosing because they're fine when they don't pick. Exactly. Exactly. One, it's so bad to seem like the women don't have a choice in what's happening. Uh, Brittany 12, thank you for the super chat. He got cool points because he was dating an older woman, but I see this going the same way like Brittany Renner. The L Factor member for 11 months. Thank you. Wendy Williams situation kind of reminds me of the movie I care a lot that's on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. I don't know if I said thank you. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, Miko, thank you for another super chat. Bringing up who might have fucked and the bottom line is they still would. <laughs> Word to Megan. You know I was thinking about that line, right? And you know the dick wasn't worth shit if it wasn't worth coming back for seconds. Okay, listen, listen. Yeah, they're gonna be mad at Britney Renner, but the truth of the matter is, a lot of the times these women get the get the so called karma because they get into these relationships with these men, and I'm talking about Britney Renner, and they end up still getting they they heartbroken and they face cracked by some disrespectful ass nigga that they know they shouldn't have never had, you know, all up in between their skins. Okay. But anyway, y'all, I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm I'm good now. I think we've talked about it all that I want to discuss. And I'll be back. Um, child, I'll be back soon enough for members only live. Okay. Um, but yeah, like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see y'all in the next one. All right. Peace out.